Hello, welcome. We're looking at math trigonometry, graphs of trig functions, and in this video we're going to be looking at the midline of a sinusoidal function from an equation. And this one we can do rather quickly, and I'll explain for a minute or so what's happening. So in this example, here are our four equations. And to find the midline from an equation, it ends up being quite easy. And that's by design, right? These equations are set up and written in such a way so we can identify the midlines really quickly. So here they are. In the first equation, it's negative 3. It's this number right here. So the midline would be y equals negative 3. It's a horizontal line at negative 3. Here, it's at y equals 8. So maybe pause the video and try these two. In this one, it's just negative 10. And we don't see anything written in the last one, right? So we can, we can infer that it's plus 0. And that means that the equation would be y equals 0. So why is it so easy to do this in a trig function? So let's look at uh, Desmos real quick. Let's say I type in a parent function y equals the sine of x. Okay. Then, let's say, let's call that f of x. If you want another function g of x, right, that shows how the midline shifts, right? So here, let's say the midline, let's say sine of x, excuse me, plus um, d. Let's make our midline d. And let's just show that line at y equals d, right? So I'm going to change a couple of things here. I want the midline to match the color of the function g. I want it to be dashed. There's my midline. And I'm just going to move this function up and down. OK, so here at the parent function, originally sine of x, the midline is at 0. So in that case, it would be f of x equals the sine of x plus 0. But let's say d is 1. Watch what happens. If I go up to 1, see how the midline follows the value of d d is now 1, which is also our midline at 1. If I raise it up to 5, this would be g of x would be the sine of x plus 5, and 5 is that midline. What's really happening here is what happens in all function transformations. So instead of, to kind of show you this, instead of writing a separate function g of x, let's say we just consider the function f of x, which is the sine of x, our original function, plus d. And the same thing happens. And you might show it this way because all functions do this. When, and by do this, I mean if you take the output of a function, in this case f of x, and you add to it, if the amount you're adding is positive, you translate it up vertically by that amount. So this midline is really the center point of your trig function, which is special. But it also is telling you how much you're shifting your function or translating your function up or down, just like for any function, right? If f of x was, let's say, I don't know, x squared, a parabola. Here the midline doesn't apply, so we can get rid of that. But here, if I add or subtract, the function moves up or down. But the special case, of course, with the trig function is that, let me go back to my trig function here, the midline is moving up and down, so it has a special property in the trig function, but also you can just think of it as a vertical translation. So this is nothing new in functions. It's just vertical translations. All right, hope that helped.